Hi, it's Nancy at Sipping and Painting Hamden. We're going to paint this lovely painting today called Starry Night. And uh, before we get started, if you purchased one of our kits from our studio, I'm going to show you how to make it into a uh, the pizza box into an easel. So here we have our pizza box. And all you have to do is turn it on the side and stand it up on your table and then put a piece of tape. I'd say break off a, a tape about maybe 14 inches and then put it on each side, just connecting these two sides to the pizza box so that when you turn it sideways, it looks like the letter A. And then it will stand. And then all you have to do is put your painting in the box. And the great thing about this is that the pizza box does collect the excess paint, which is kind of nice. It won't be all over your table. So awesome, I'm excited you're here and we're gonna start painting, yay. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is, I wanna make sure you have the materials I have. You should have a small, medium, and large brush or something similar. Um, your paint kit might not come with these. I mean, it obviously doesn't come with these exact brushes, but what you have should work. These are small, medium, and large, and there's nothing fancy about them. I also have some napkins here, a stack of napkins. I have my water jar. You should uh, fill your little container with water if you haven't already. And then I have to say, my paint, uh, my blue paint was really runny. Um, and it ran all over the place, and so now it's kind of flat on my plate. But I have black, blue, yellow, red, and white paint. I'm going to use the most in blue, so I have a lot of blue on my, on my plate. Not so much of these other colors, uh, not so much of red and yellow. Um, but we'll use blue and black and some, we'll use all the colors, but not in a lot, a lot of a big quantity, except for the blue. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my big brush and I'm going to put it in my water and then I'm going to cover my canvas with just plain old water. And I also have a beverage. So maybe you're drinking water tonight, maybe you're drinking wine, maybe you're drinking a cup of coffee or beer, uh, but a beverage always, always is nice when you paint. So this original painting was done by one of our artists here at the studio, uh, Sarah Mount, and I really love this painting. I think she did a great job. If you uh, have other paints at home, uh, besides the colors that we have, and, and you don't need them, but I will tell you this color down here is phthalo green. So if you are a person who happens to have phthalo green, you can save yourself the mixing step by uh, using phthalo green. But we're gonna mix our paints and we're gonna do just absolutely fine by mixing. Uh, so we're not gonna do that yet. We're gonna start with our sky and I'm just gonna go straight into my blue paint and I am going to cover the top two thirds of the painting with just blue paint. That's all I'm gonna do, just plain old blue paint. And I'm going back and forth <clears throat> horizontally because this painting has some really fun wind in it, but just as a base, I want it to just be flat. And uh, if I were doing X strokes or something that would add texture, it would compete with all this. So I just want to put it on what I call flat, just, just plain, uh, straight lines. Um, will not compete with what we've got going on in the sky when we do that. And it's pretty easy to go back and forth. So just plain old blue. I am gonna be going over the center portion with some lighter blue to make mountains. So I don't have to worry too much about what it looks like in the center portion. If it's streaky or messy in there, I'm not at all concerned. In fact, all of the sky 
is going to be painted over with other things. So you don't have to do this perfectly. We just want to put on a thin coat of blue for our background and then not worry about it. I'm also going to paint the sides and the top. And then when the whole thing's dry enough to touch, I'm going to flip it over and paint the bottom as well. And the reason I do that is that's called a gallery wrap. And when I paint all the way around, then it has a nice finished edge. And then I can go back Uh, I, I'd rather not go back, but I can hang it on my wall without putting on a frame. All right, so that's that's the first step. Two thirds of the way down on the canvas, so one third, two thirds, thir three thirds. So uh, two thirds of the way down with just blue. I'll pull it down a little bit lower, so it'll overlap lap in my green. And if at any time you have a question to my student. Um, just go ahead and unmute yourself and then I'll be able to hear you better at the computer, but go ahead and unmute yourself if you uh, have a question in the meantime. I'm going to go ahead and show you the next step, even though I don't expect you're anywhere near ready for it. And I'll tell you why I'm going to show it to you. We want all of this to dry at the same time. So close to the same time. So to get the green that we're gonna put down here, we're just gonna mix in yellow with some blue. Don't go right into your yellow and contaminate the whole thing with your blue brush. You can just pull it together if they're next to each other or make a new pile, but keep some of the yellow, uh, you know, un unmessed up with. Unmessed up with, is that, that's not a word. <laughs> Virgin, how about that? Let's leave the, the um, this yellow clean, this blue clean, and then just mix some green, some yellow and blue together to make green. For thalo green, which is a more blue green, you're going to mix, have to mix in more blue. And that's gonna give you that bluer evergreen look that we're going for. It's more blue than say a Kelly green, or like, which is like a grass green. This has more blue in it. Now it's not gonna look exactly like this one. Um, all of our paintings here at the studio, we did the originals before COVID, before we started selling paint kits. And so uh, we have, you know, probably a do dozen different colors of green here. So on our YouTube, classes and um, more so now in the studio as well, we're mixing our own paint colors and that's actually a really great practice. That's wonderful. It's a great art to mix your own colors. So I'm still learning about colors myself as I mix the same five basic colors, black, white, yellow, red, and blue. Still experimenting myself and it's uh, actually, it's a good, a mixed blessing this pandemic because I'm learning all kinds of things that I didn't have to know before, which uh, which is pretty great. And one of those things is how to make a more thalo blue. So this has more blue in it than I normally would if I were painting grass. All right, so the bottom third is that green color. And I'm gonna just try to make a fairly straight line across, although we're gonna come in and mess that line up a bit when we put in our foothills anyway. So don't worry about it too much. Just to, you know, try to make it straight and then don't worry about it. We're gonna mess it up. So it's mostly straight. We're good to go. Now I'm going to have to let this dry a bit. You can see it's very, very shiny. And anytime paint is shiny, it's, it tells me that it's wet. 
So I am going to paint on the underside of it as well, uh, but I don't want to pick it up quite yet because it's all very wet. So I'm going to wait about five minutes for this to dry so that it's dry enough that I can pick it up and paint the other, the underside. Or I could paint the underside later. It really doesn't matter. I also want to tell you, um, I had this come up recently in one of our in-studio classes where people were telling me that they're using a zillion napkins. Uh, let water, when you're painting with acrylics, acrylics are water-based, let water do all the work for you. So just swish your brush in a ton in your water and let the water clean your brush. Don't use the napkins for that. The napkins are basically just to test, test your paint brush when you pull it out of the water to make sure that you actually did do a good job. So I can see that I still had some a little bit on my ferrule, the metal part of my brush. So I'm going to put it back in and try that again. But you won't use a million napkins if you let your water do all the work, not your napkin. All right, we'll try that again, this time clean. Okay, so I'm gonna let my painting dry uh, for about five minutes. This would be a good time if you need to let out the dog or you know, get another beverage uh, or whatever you need to do. Uh, this would be a great time to do it. And I will see you back here in about five minutes or so. Hi again, I'm just checking in. And one of the great things about stepping back and walking away from your canvas instead of watching paint dry, which takes a lot longer, it seems, um, is that you can see your painting from far away and you will see some, it'll look different to you than when you're close up. So what I like to do, I, I like to look at it from far away and, and see, um, see if it's really what I thought it was. And what I'm noticing is that this green is darker than this green and that was bothering me from a distance so I'm glad I walked away. I'm going to mix a little bit of white into my green just a little bit and then I'm just going to put on a very thin coat over what I already have of just a slight shade lighter. I'm going to go ahead and start because our colors can mix in a little bit even if they're a little wet it's still okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to create this swirl here. There's a swirl, and then we're gonna pull up one right next to it. So there's two huge swirls in the sky, and then there's a round circle, <coughs> excuse me for the moon over here, and then little curly cues around. So we're gonna do these two huge ones first, and then the sun, and then come back in and do those and the swirls around them. So uh, my, if your paint is a little bit wet on top, it's okay, because I'm gonna take my clean baby brush, a small brush, and I'm just gonna sketch out where my curves are gonna go. And it's just like a dotted line on the road. And I'm gonna have it curl into itself like that. You can stop it, you know, uh, a little earlier if you want. I can see that this one stopped a little bit earlier. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference, but it's up to you. And then the next one is gonna look like it's coming from underneath this one. And it's gonna be about the same size and shape. I need to make sure I leave some sun area. I probably could have gone over a little bit to the left, but that's okay. That's the great thing about using a baby brush is I can change this a little bit if I want to. If, if I'm not happy with how much room I'm gonna have around my sun nut, I can just paint over the whole thing and no one will even know, but I'm going to just be happy with it. Um, yeah, there is a beautiful sun there, but there's also these really powerful sweeps. So I'm gonna just go with it. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna go with it. All right, and so I'm gonna keep continuing, and then I can come inside of this one 
and then out the other side, and that's going to bring the whole thing this way a little bit. What I mean by that is watch what I do. Okay, so here's those lines, and there's going to be a ton of lines in this painting. Notice I'm coming inside on this side, inside, and then I can cross over and go outside on this one. And the only reason I'm doing that, and I fill in the bottom a little bit, the only reason I'm doing that is to pull this whole thing over a little bit. The point of this is, there's no mistakes in art, just happy accidents. And I'm just making these with dots, just dots. That's all there is. And I'm going to have this one, I'm going to start to curve it in more here. So it went around and now it's curving in. So I'm gonna do a bunch of white ones, and then I'm gonna do a bunch of light blue ones. So I'm just gonna show you, since I talked about fixing things, I'm gonna show you that it really is this easy. I'm looking at this and thinking, oh, I could have made that curve a little bit a little bit different. Um, don't have a heart attack when I do this, okay? All I have to do is paint over it. If I don't like what I did, so you can keep going, you don't have to do this. But I just wanna show you, nothing is permanent forever when you're dealing with acrylic paint. You just, see how dry that is already? Don't, don't do what I'm doing unless you messed up. But I just want to show you that it's very easy to fix things. You just paint over them. So I can paint over this. I can come back in with my white. And I can leave enough room for that sun. And I'm not going to stress about it. It's really just not a big deal at all. And I think that's a really important thing in learning to paint is to know that when you paint, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay. That's why I love painting. Because sometimes I'll do something and I'll think, oh, I should have done it that way, or I could do it this way, or I just had a new idea, and I'll just fix it. It's not a big deal. So I'm going to put a little bit more on top of that, and then I'm going to go back in with my white, and I'm going to do it again. I'm not going to go so far to the right this time. But hopefully you're not doing what I did. And hopefully you're just going with it, with those swirls. Bob Ross used to have happy accidents when he was painting. And he would frequently in his shows, he, he would, you know, he'd make a little mistake somewhere. And then he'd say, oh, this tree needs a friend. And then he'd cover up his mistake with, a, with another tree or a bird and say, oh, I think a little bird lives in here, a little squirrel. And so if he had a random paint mark or something, he would just he would just paint over it. And he would make a little little squirrel or a little bird or maybe another tree. All right. So that's how easy it is to fix things with acrylic paint. And when I come back in, you can see in these swirls, there's I'll show you. There's white. There's a light blue. There's even a lavender that they used uh, to mix in uh, a little red and the more blue. And there's also this orange, which is a tiny bit of red and this yellow. We're gonna walk through that step by step, but I just wanna show you some of these are light blue. So if I go over that wet paint with white and it makes light blue until it's dry, it's not a big deal. All right, so after you, you do your light, after you do your white swirls and you get them the way you want, then I want you to come over here and do, do a sun. I'm gonna go ahead and show you that sun. Uh, basically, it's kind of funny, it just occurred to me, you can make this into a Colorado, see if you want it. Um, but basically that sun, 
pardon me, the moon, rather, is a C. It's already a C. And I'm just putting it right on with my white paint. And then I'm going to go over it later with golden. And then just make those dashes around it. I'm using my small brush because this is a smaller area. Oops. It's okay. Happy accident. Remember, no problem. All right. So I'm putting on white around that C. And where it mixes with the light blue, I'm embracing it. Where it mixes with the blue makes light blue, that's perfect. I'm gonna come back and on top of the whitest parts, I'm gonna come back in and put some yellow and a little gold, golden. But that's just a C. And the C actually almost connects. All right. So I'm gonna come back in with my, I'm gonna be a little more controlled about this time. So I've got one there and then I'm gonna come in All right, I'm gonna keep doing this. And if you are finished with your white, putting it in, then mix a little bit of blue into it, unless, unless your paint was a little wet and gave you that blue already, that'll be the next step. It's just adding the color you don't have because we're doing white, we're doing light blue, and then we're gonna, we're gonna mix some lavender too. I'll go ahead and just show you the colors for the lavender. So to make lavender, you just take a little blue, a little white, and, the and a tiny amount of red. Because, yeah, tiny amount of red. And it should make a pretty lavender. I, you only need a little bit. So let me just show you. I'm making it on the side, so you can't really see it, but. I'll hold my brush up in a second. I'm just stirring it in. So it's white, red, and blue. And you will get a lovely little lavender color as soon as you stir it all in. Lovely lavender. You can see it up here. I can add a little more red, a little more blue if I want it to be a little more powerful. But in the painting, it's not powerful. It's, it's just a very delicate la lavender. So that's one of the colors we're gonna use. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna put on some of those. And I'm continuing with that, that basic shape. And none of these look perfect. They're blending with the, what's underneath and that's okay. I think I need to let mine dry a little bit more, but hopefully yours is sticking pretty well. And then you can go ahead and put some of that lavender color in and around your C as well. It's not a lot. It's just one of the many colors that are in there. There was a really interesting documentary. I think it was on PBS. I'm not sure. But basically, it was someone who, 
it was a physicist who said that in studying the shapes and the movements, uh, the shapes that indicate movement in a Van Gogh painting, this physicist said that it resembled the actual way energy moves. And I'm, I don't have any training in physics, but I just thought this guy was fascinating. And he suggested, he thought that Van Gogh may actually see, he may have actually been able to see movement. He may have had another sense that other people don't naturally have which I thought was really fascinating. And I can't remember the technical words that he used, but he said that um, the way he painted was very similar to the shapes and what it would look like if, if energy had a color, how it moves. I thought that was pretty cool. He was mentally ill. We know that. Um, I chopped off his ear and gave it to a prostitute friend as a little bizarre gift. But he might have been able to see more All right, so we're just going to do this a whole lot. Um, and we're just going to keep on going with it. There's a whole lot of this in our sky. And so it's going to feel a little bit tedious. We're just going to keep doing it. And I would vary the lines a little bit. If my lines were kind of big, you can make some a little smaller. What if color you, are we in? Uh, I'm just going back in with a little more white. But oh, when you're white, when you have some white already in there that's dry, then on top of the dry white, uh, let's let me show you a new color. So we're going to mix this golden color. Actually, some of it's yellow. You can come straight in with yellow. Let's do a little bit of yellow before we mix some golden color. So you can come in with just plain yellow. But the reason I'm suggesting you put it on top of some white that's dry is that the yellow is not strong enough and bold enough to stand up to the on a blue background by itself. So you have two ways you can do it. You can mix a little white into your yellow. That's one way to do it. Or you can paint over some white that you already have. But yellow right on top of blue will not work. It'll make green. Um, the yellow just isn't a strong enough pigment to go over blue and look yellow. So if you add a little bit of white to your yellow paint, just a little bit, not too much, it's going to give that paint a little more body. Now there may be some very expensive, you know, uh, paints that have yellow has a lot of body. Uh, we don't use those. We use student grade and it, it does require a little, little extra white in there to really stand up and pop. And now it's popping. This is what I wanted. That was a little crazy that I started over, but sorry about that. <laughs> that happens sometimes when you paint. It's life, it's real life. So I'll show you the last color and then you can alternate between these colors, but wash your brush in between if you wanna keep them uh, really pure looking. I'm going to just do a little row of 
this color and then I'm going to show you the gold. Basically for the gold, you just take that yellow that we used, mix with white, and then add a little bit of red to it, just a tiny bit. So it's mostly yellow with just the smallest amount of red. It's really easy to put in too much red. Red is a much stronger pigment, the red we use, than the yellow. So go easy, go easy. It's mostly yellow. But if uh, to make this orangey or peachy color, um, then it's, it's kind of like a deep gold, I think. And it doesn't have to be exactly, they don't, you know, none of ours have to match exactly, but it's just a deeper, a deeper yellow, more of a golden yellow. I'm still mixing because mine's not exactly right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix it a little bit more. But it's, it's a, it's a shit, it's between yellow and orange, really. It's a very pale yellow, a very pale orange or a, or a golden. So that's what some of them are as well. So those are the basic colors. And as long as you keep using these basic colors, just keep building on your circles. And you don't have to have neat little rows. This, uh, this uh, original inspiration, it's not the original, obviously, Van Gogh's is, is an original, but this has paint right on top of other paint. So don't worry about not, uh, you know, not being able to make perfect rows. It's not supposed to have perfect rows. It's just supposed to show movement. I'm going to keep cleaning my brush when I change colors because I do want distinct colors in there. I want everything to blend. The sky is really the time consuming part of this painting. The rest, not so much. And I always recommend stepping back and looking at things from several feet away frequently. And then I'm going to make some, some of mine longer, some of them shorter, just to mix it up a bit. It almost looks like things are just picked up and thrown into a tornado. When Van Gogh painted his Starry Night, he was in an institution. Um, must have been very frustrating to be locked inside. And given that a lot of us are staying home because of the pandemic, it really makes me think about him. And what his life must have been like when he created so many of his most wonderful art, pieces of art. And he wasn't an acclaimed artist when uh, some people really didn't like his art, and critics were very harsh on him. It wasn't until later that people saw his genius. What are the colors we're rotating? White, yellow, light blue, or cop copper, reddish, the red mixture? 
Yeah, all of those colors that we created, just just keep using whichever ones you want, just uh, whatever order you want, but clean your brush in between. It's a little of all of them. And sometimes they're mixing. I'm gonna put that, uh, I think it's, it's not coral, but whatever that color is, I think you call it copper. Um, maybe it's like a light salmon, whatever that color is. I'm gonna put it up here in the sea. And I'm gonna put it a couple different shades of it. And that way, this, this, the moon will pop. I want to make sure I have enough of that color in and around it as well. I forgot how, how much how much goes into this painting? It's one of our harder ones, but it's also one of our most popular ones at the studio. And you can put as many or as few as you want. If you just think, oh my gosh, I am dabbed out, then you don't have to put in a lot. We don't want paint, painting to be painful. We want it to be fun. And you'll know when you've got enough. It'll be enough when you say it is. All right, so that's the general, those are the general swirls. And then underneath um, and around, we have some smaller swirls and Here's an example, there's a dot, and then they just went around the dot the same way that we did, but as you go out, use less paint so it, it doesn't compete with these big ones. It's gonna be a little more subtle and definitely smaller on these ones that go around. Maybe I won't have all of the colors in there. So, are you, are you dotting white or does it matter what color we start the sun little burst on? Thank you. What these are are stars. And so if you dot with white and then go around it with whatever's on your brush, you know, so it's, if your brush is dirty, it'll be fine. But if you make the center of it white, it, it's more consistent with the star idea. And in fact, I can go around and put little white dots where I plan to do more of these. Now we're gonna have some mountains in here, so we don't need a lot um, of these dots, but you can put in as many or as few as you want because we are gonna fill it up with some kind of dashes. So maybe we're gonna be painting some mountains over some of these, that's okay, that's okay. Each one represents a star. So I, I did some white, and then here's some lavender around it. And I might go in and put another color. This is kind of, it reminds me of how we make roses here. These little dashes around a center point. Same kind of thing. And your colors might mix a bit, that's okay. That's all right. These just don't have as much paint, um, so they need to be a little more subtle. I'm gonna go around with light blue on the rest of it, I think.
in any place you need one, feel free to pop it on there. I am gonna mix a little bit of white with blue, just so I have some lighter blue around, I'm gonna put that around them too, some light blue. And if your dots smear into each other, that's great. No, no worries. These really aren't supposed to look like perfect dashes. They're supposed to just look like, <laughs> it's gonna sound corny, moments in time around a star as energy moves. It sounds a little hokey, but I think that's what he was going for. Have you ever seen a uh, Van Gogh up close? I've seen a few of them. I went to France last year uh, to go to the museums and it was the trip of a lifetime. It was the answer to what I've been dreaming and went to the Louvre and the Dorsay and just all the places that I just dreamt about going. And so we saw Van Gogh's up close, we saw Monet's up close, lots of Monet's. Um, and <laughs> Van Gogh's don't look good up close, that's for sure. They look very thick. He really cakes on the paint. So I know that I use a lot of paint. Uh, he really did, oh my goodness. He just kicked it on like crazy. Put it on like, like he was making a sandwich. It's, just lots of paint on his brushes. Interesting guy. It's an unusual way to paint in that day. People did not understand him. So I'm toning down those stars by putting in light blue around it. You can see that. And there's the other colors in there, but there's also light blue. So that, so that the stars don't compete with the big swirls. They're a little more subdued. They're just twinkling stars, not huge uh, warm or cold fronts moving in. And you can paint these right over to the sides and the top as you go. And that will make it look like your canvas has a painting wrapped around the, the frame. When you get to these in-between parts, basically you just make little swirls with light blue around your stars so that all of the shapes are filled in. It kind of echoes what's in there. Hope that makes sense. It's a very busy sky. I'm noticing, uh, I can't see things well up close. That's why it's really, really good to step back and see, but I'm noticing on the cam camera that my colors are pretty bold and bright uh, compared to these, but huh, whatever, it happens. Everyone has a different style. My style is gonna be different from yours. You might be a much more subtle, you are probably a much more su subtle painter than I am. I tend to go big or go home go big and go bold or go home. And that's the beauty of painting is that you get to see what your style is. It took me a long time to notice what style I had. And then when I saw it, I couldn't believe it. And I can try to copy a painting closely and it's impossible. I just end up making it bigger and bolder. I always do. And some people, we have about, we had about seven or eight different artists that worked here. Uh, before the pandemic. A lot of them are not with us anymore, um, unfortunately, and maybe someday they'll come back. But each one had a different style, and I could tell just by looking at a painting who painted it. It was really fun to guess, but it was obvious to, that everyone had their own style. 
And we could copy their work, but we couldn't copy their style. You're born with that. I'm not going to uh, go too much farther down because I'm going to be put, I'm going to be covering some of this up anyway with some hills, um, and it would just wouldn't make sense to waste my time doing that. Um, but I'm just going to you know bring it down to about the same plane across, and then we're going to be covering some of this with hills. There is a little bit of, even inside the moon, there's a little bit of color and motion. Oops, too thick. I'm going to add a little yellow on top of that moon because I really want the moon to stand out so people notice, oh, that's different than a star. <laughs> wow. Mine has a lot more color than the original. I, I'm anxious to see what yours looks like. Hopefully you reined yourself in a little more than I did, but this is my style. A little bolder. Before any of that gets too dry, I'm just going to show you the next step, but you don't have to be there. I just want to show it to you so when you are there, you can do it. It's real easy. I'm just going to make a blue that is lighter than the background, but not too light. Just gonna use some of my blue. Gonna make a and then I'm going to put in my mountain. And yep, I'm gonna have to ruin some of this, and who cares? I don't care, do you? Uh, There's mountain number one, and it's got a big valley, and then it comes up in a peak, and then it goes down. That's pretty light. I'm gonna add more blue to it to fill it in, but I want you to be able to see it against that blue background. So I wanted you to be able to see where you're gonna be stopping anyway, because we have to put in this mountain. And then bring it down. I'm painting the mountain with the strokes that I would ski down if I were a skier on that mountain. So I'm using the brush strokes to help me kind of suggest a slope. It's like, like I parted someone's hair and I'm just brushing it down the sides in that part. Be sure to cover it over the top, or the sides rather. That's pretty flat at the bottom. We're going to be putting our city on top of that. And I didn't mix my paint perfectly. Um, I'm a little sloppier about things than you might be, but got a little bit of a marble effect into it. If you mix yours a little bit better, that's fine, or you can just go over it with your brush. We're going to be putting a few little highlights on top of that mountain anyway, just so it doesn't look Uniform. So that should be easy. Don't don't fuss too much over the mountains. 
we're going to be covering them up with a city and then some little foothills in front. So I'm, I'm just not going to mess with those mountains. When you get your mountains on though, then you can take just some really light, I'll show you. So here's the mountain up close. And then there's just really light uh, touches of highlights at the top in the same sweeping motion with these dots that we had up in the sky. But these are gonna be more subtle. And so by making my paint marbly when I painted in those blue mountains back there, it actually helped because it was quicker and I'm gonna be just adding some little dots and dashes in there anyway. So I could do little dots and dashes with any of those colors I put in the sky, just to make it look like there's a little movement in the tops of our mountains too. A little snow or not quite sure what that is. <clears throat> Busy painting. So it's the same colors we use in the sky. Just alternate, just use a little of this, a little of that, and just some strokes to show the slope of these. And yes, all my colors are kind of blending together on it. That's okay. And he doesn't go all the way down with it. It's just near the top. They're just little highlights near the top. So this is very much an Van Gogh inspired painting, but it's really changing a lot as we put in mountains, which are not in Van Gogh's painting. And we're gonna put some Denver buildings in it and it becomes a completely different concept. It's gonna get easier from here. The sky is very busy. Um, cities, not, not so hard. Foothills, not hard at all. And then a little bit more of those dashes in the bottom, but all in black, and then a plant. So it, it's, we're doing well, we're doing well. A lot of work so far, but we're doing well. And if, you, if any of those are too bold, you can just kind of knock them down with your clean brush. So I think what I'm going to do is give you time to do those and then I'm going to listen carefully and when you say you've got that then we'll go on and we'll put our buildings in a black. We don't have to let them dry because these buildings they're on in black but you can tell they have color kind of mixed in. They're not completely black they're more like charcoal. So if we paint black over what we have we'll get something like that anyway. So we don't have to let this completely dry to move on, but I wanna give you enough time. Um, 
and know that some of what you're going to do is going to be covered with buildings anyway. So don't fuss too much over the mountains, if you would. And uh, I'll give you a few minutes to, to do that. I noticed that my mountains aren't as tall as their mountains. Um, you know, that's okay. However tall you made yours are fine. Uh, if you wanna make them taller than mine, please, by all means. I think I was so involved with my sky, I really got carried away with my sky, that I underdid the mountains a little bit. But like I said, every artist is different. Yours is gonna be different than mine. Mine is different than the original. And the original is definitely different than Van Gogh's. So. That's okay. That's all right. If I wanted, I could always come in and make them a little bit bigger if I want. I think I had way too much fun making the sky. First Van, Van Gogh's painting didn't have mountains in front of it. When you put in those dots and dashes as the highlight on the top of the mountains, uh, I just did that with my small brush. And again, it's very quick and not fussy. Uh, we're going to be covering a lot of this with some buildings in a few minutes. And like that, the mountain is higher. We are gonna be using black for the uh, next step. And so be sure when you're finished with your mountains that you uh, wash your brushes. I brought those down a little bit too much. I'm just cleaning up my mountain a little bit. That came down a little low. The foothills are going to go on in front of the city, which is not Denver at all, but who cares, right? Uh, but that's the way she has them in the in her painting, so we're going to go with it. If you want to put put them in before the city, that's fine. Basically, they're just just a squiggly line, getting smaller as you go, and then filled in with more blue and highlight. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put them in front of the city because I think it ties it all in together, although that's not technically what Denver looks like. Den Denver is not in a valley with, well, I guess if you think of the hills in Parker, maybe. But that's one of those things, the creative license of an artist, right? Make your world the way you want it, not the way it really is to others. So a little shout out to Sarah Mount, the artist who created this Denver-inspired 
the, the Denver version of an inspired starting up. All right, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the city. And if you're not there yet, that's okay. This is going to take me a while. Basically, we don't worry about every single building to make it look like Denver. What we do is we put a whole bunch of buildings next to each other so that they're touching. And then we put a, a couple iconic tops on top. And then it looks like Denver. Kind of sneaky. So basically, all I'm going to do is I do want a, a large one that later is going to become our cash register building. So I'm going to start that here. And it's quite tall and rectangular. So when I do put a top on that later, to create the cash register building, I'll know that that's there. And then basically all you do is you put little rectangles, but try to vary their height and their width. So if that one is that tall, maybe that one's that tall and narrow. And then this one's gonna be wider and taller. But I want each one to look different. And maybe it overlaps in front. They are rectangular. If you know of a building in Denver that's not rectangular, you're welcome to put that in there. Um, and by painting over my mountains while they're still a little bit wet, I'm getting these cool um, charcoal-like textures in my buildings. You see that? It's black paint. It's just solid black paint. But by putting it on over uh, wet on wet, it's automatically giving me some texture in those buildings, which I don't have to go back in and put in later to make them more interesting looking. Okay, so um, let's see. So I've got all different shapes here. I want to make sure that I don't make it too predictable. So maybe I have, you know, some short ones next to short ones and tall next to tall, and then, then they alternate. I just want to make sure I mix it up. Because if you were looking at an urban um, skyscape from a distance, they would be all mixed up. You don't want anything to be too orderly or symmetrical. You do want them re rectangular shaped, however. Maybe that one's really skinny. Maybe this one has a point on it. Maybe this one has an A-frame at the top. And in general, they're getting smaller as they go away from the cash register building. but I don't want it to be like perfect stairs. You don't have to worry about the bottom because those foothills are gonna go over in front and it's gonna clean that up. So whatever mess I have at the bottom, I really don't need to worry about. And this goes, the city goes a little bit farther, a little farther over here. And then it, it stops, and then the plant is going to go overlap it over here. All right. So there's my 
Denver City, and the way we're going to make it Denver, you can make it any city at this point, but the way we're going to make it Denver, this is my cash register building. So do watch this. Whatever you're doing right now, do watch this step. I'm going to, this is my cash register building, right? I want to make sure it's a really good rectangle first. Okay, that's a good rectangle. All right. To make this cash register building, I have to go up a little bit and curve it on this right side. It's basically, the, it reminds me of a McDonald's trash can at the airport. Um, or if you can imagine this as the top of a bassinet. But this part right here is rounded and then it goes straight up from there. Okay, so first I'm gonna go straight up straight up and then I'm just going to round this side a little bit that's rounded that side straight up and then from the top of this point rounded down I don't know what that building is really called what it's really called but everyone in all of our classes when we paint Denver always calls it the cash register building it is the most iconic building in Denver So I'm not gonna do much else to my painting, I'm, to my city. This one does have a few light streaks on the buildings, just a few light streaks. And they're going down, they're going vertically. So I'm not gonna fuss, I'm not gonna make windows, that would take us forever. But I will just kind of make a few little light streaks and then I'll, I'll mix those in a little bit. I'm going to tap those down a little bit, but they're just little light streaks and I'm going to go over them so that they don't look so obvious in a minute. So don't panic. I'm going to blend them in a bit with my black by just scribbling on them. I just, I just want them to be little streaks of light. And I'm trying not, to, I'm just being careful not to mess up the outline the sky line, but this is like lights reflecting in front of each of the buildings. Maybe there's windows reflecting light. Maybe it's light coming up from the street where the cars are driving. We don't really know, but they're just, just like little bits of lighter paint just kind of streaked down and then scrubbed back out. So it's just, I'll hold it up for you in a second. I just want to make sure that none of that light that I just painted on there stays. I want to scrub it back out, being very careful with my baby brush to do that. And that's it. It doesn't take long at all. It just adds a little bit of texture or interest to the front of those buildings. Nothing was fussy, I did it quickly. All right, so this is a very complicated painting. It's got a lot of parts, but we are real, we're, uh, I would say we're more than two thirds done. We are doing great. Uh, all we have to do is we're gonna put in some foothills. Those are gonna be really easy. Uh, because we've already done the mountain behind it. The foothills are the same thing. We're going to use the blue paint, but instead of making the swooping two triangles, we're just going to make a wiggly line, fill it in with the light blue, and then put those little highlights in front of it. But let me show you over here. She does have a bluer, bigger hill over here. Maybe that's supposed to be golden. I don't know. But you can just do those. Let me just show you the general shade or color of those over there. It's just a little bit darker than what's over here because it brings your eye closer to the city. So it, oh, uh, that's not blue, hold on. I'll do it black so you can see. Basically, she just has some hills that kind of go over the side of the city. And then she 
Okay, so that's black. I'm gonna add blue to that. I have to go get some more blue from the back. Um, but just go over, go over these in blue, dark blue. And then when you do get to the foothills, it's just basically a wavy line. Don't make it symmetrical. That's just going to go up in front of your building, your buildings, and then paint those in with a light blue, light blue. So I'm gonna go get more blue paint, but I did wanna show you the shape and the lines, okay? Maybe I could do a little bit more before I go get more paint. I forgot how much blue we use in this painting. We actually have, I haven't done this Denver one before, but we, we have done many different versions of starry skies, um, Van Gogh looking starry skies. And this is a new one. We did one that was really fun a while ago. We don't have it on YouTube yet or on a class, um, a video, virtual class. But we did one of the Doctor Who TARDIS floating around in a starry sky, and that was really a fun painting. All right, so you can see that I'm gonna go get some more blue. That is light blue. These little foothills in front, light blue. And basically that just covers up the bottom of the whole thing. So I'm gonna go get some more blue and I'll be right back. I'm gonna put in another plug for stepping away from your painting because when I stepped away, I noticed how small my city is compared to my enormous sky. But I couldn't tell that from up close. I'm too close to the situation. So if I want to add, um, add some higher foothills here, I really don't have room because my buildings will be dwarfed. But what I could do is add a little more foothill below and cover up some of that green. And then just add a little bit, I can just add a little bit more uh, height to my foothills that way. Why not? It's your painting. Uh, step back and look at it. And remember, no one is ever going to see the original. They're only going to see yours, and they're going to think you are a genius. Well, they're going to see the original Van Gogh, but this isn't an original Van Gogh. This is an inspired version of a starry sky over Denver. So, yeah. So I'm not going to get too concerned that mine doesn't look like Sarah's and hers didn't look like Van Gogh. So. It's all good. Little differences in artist style is a great thing. I am going to be putting a big plant here. We only have two more steps to this painting. It's a long one, but uh, we're going to be putting a big swirly Van Gogh tree right in here. And we're gonna be putting some little rose shapes down in front. So we're getting close. So by just at making the bottom taller, thicker, I'm actually adding more foothill where I didn't have enough. So. More than one way to, to change up a painting. I was gonna say to skin a cat, but I, I love cats. That's a, <laughs> that's, a, that's a gross expression. Are you still there, still hanging in? When I do get those foothills in, I know this is gonna shock you, but there's just a little bit of highlight at the top, just like we did on the mountain. Oh, wow, lots of paint. A 
lot of this painting is painting wet on wet, uh, which we don't do in acrylics very often. All these colors are playing in the sandbox together. To take a little bit of that white or yellow or whatever color is handy, the light color, and just kind of scribble it in a little bit on top of those foothills and then blend it in a bit. I just want the tops to be a little bit lighter. That is too, too much. I'm going to have to go over that with some blue, break it up. Just some, if I would have stuck to Van Gogh's lines, I probably would have been okay. Just a little bit of those highlights on the, on the, this top portion of each of these little foothills. Just so they stand out a bit. And also these hills. This is very messy and sloppy, all this stuff. It's okay. I considered warning you that this was going to be a challenging painting, but that I didn't want you to run away. All right, so let me show you up close what we've got. Now this is the original. Do you see the, the lines and the foothills? They're quite messy. They're just kind of scrubbed on top of that light blue. Nothing fussy about it. Any place that mine looks a little fussy, I'm gonna break it up. Literally just scribbling that little little highlight on those foothills. It's just that the tops of them are scribbled paint and the bottoms are deeper in color. Pretty, pretty simple really. All right, I'm gonna show you the next step, but if you're not ready, that's okay. Just watch what I'm doing, because it'll take a while. I'm gonna go into my black paint with my baby brush. And all we are doing in this whole bottom green is we're gonna put, just like we made the stars, those are bright, we're gonna make little rosettes with just black. And what I mean by rosettes is it's, you put a, a dot or a line in the middle and then you go around it just like we did with the stars. I'm gonna make them bigger than that actually. And I'm gonna chisel my brush a bit. My, my black paint's getting a little thick, so I need to add a little water to get it to cooperate. I'm gonna chisel it on my brush. I want my black paint to be, to cooperate like ink would. So if yours is really thick like tar, then just add a little water to it and chisel your brush by moving it within your fingers, between your fingers back and forth to just try to get a smooth point. I don't want any big clumps. Here I had some clumpiness going on, so there we go, a little more smooth. If you're a makeup wearer, then you'll know what I mean. If you ever have clumpy mascara, it's, it's not fun. So we, we want these to, these are gonna be bigger, but I want them to um, be smooth. I 
and we're just going to put, put them, cover this base, basically. I have to remember to make them big enough that it doesn't take me a week from Thursday, until a week from Thursday to put them all on here. I'm noticing that these are darker than what she has over here. I'm thinking she might have added a little bit of white to it and that it would be more charcoal-y. So before I do any more, I'm just gonna add a little bit of white to it. And my water. So it's not too dark. Yeah, that's a little better, that's a little more subtle. Oops. I don't want it to be a lot darker than my city, then no one will look at my city. So a charcoal color seemed to be the thing. A little lighter gray than, uh, than my city. It's, it's still charcoal. in those little rosette patterns. Don't forget to thin your paint. as you go. After we get all these little rosette shapes on, then we just have a tree, that's it. It's not a straightforward tree like every other tree we paint in the studio. It is a very unique uh, mango tree, but it is a tree and that'll be our last step. Yeah, pretty complicated painting. Challenging, I love a challenge. Shelly, are you still hanging in there, Rochelle? I may have lost my student. Oh no. Nope, I'm I'm good. Oh good. Sorry. I was like, oh man. I, I, I was hoping I didn't lose you when I uh, painted over my blue sky in the beginning. <laughs> uh, thank you for that step. That, that really? was useful. Thank you. Oh, good. Okay. You know, sometimes we just have to fix things. I was kind of panicking when I did it. I thought, oh, I hope this doesn't throw her off. Um, but, you know, that's, that's the real world. When you paint, you got to fix things sometimes. I saw some show on TV about the Mona Lisa and how many layers of paint are underneath it. They, uh, when the masters painted, it was really hard to, you know, come up with the paints. They were expensive and they made their own canvases. And so they would reuse the same canvases over and over and they would just paint many layers, um, you know, before they had a masterpiece that would stay that way. We take for granted how lucky we are just to have canvases and paints so readily available.
when I need more canvases, I don't have to weave a cloth and build a frame and build it up from there. I just call up Michael's and say, I need more canvases. Boom. I'll pick them up. They're, they're ready for me. So the green is really different. I, I want to acknowledge that um, the green that we used is a little different uh, than the, the phthalo green in this one. Um, but it's okay. I'm not hating it. I'm okay with it. My <laughs> sky is really what steals the show. It is a very bold, bold, bold sky. Um, hers is more subdued in this bold sky look. And we're going to bring it all together with a Van Gogh tree. And it's interesting, if you look at this Van Gogh tree, Van Gogh style tree, it really looks like a ponytail to me. It just looks like hair cut in layers. It looks human-like. It is the most unusual tree or bush I've ever seen. It almost looks like a hand with long skinny fingers and a Jack Burton. Jack Burton? Is that his name? Wait, what's his name? Ted, Tim Burton movie. Yeah, Tim. yeah, Tim Burton movie. If Tim Burton painted trees, that's how he would do it, I bet. Let me know when you're ready to move on to your tree, okay? I'm good. Okay, awesome. Okay, cool. So, so this tree is unusual, uh, like so much of this painting. Make sure that your paints are not dry. I'm spritzing mine, but you can just mix in a uh, little drop of water. I'm going to use, to start, I'm going to use a medium brush, but then I'm going to switch to small. But the first few, I want to put on a medium, and I'm going to turn my brush. So here's my medium brush. Oops. Here's my medium brush. It's a medium flat. So it's got a flat top, and it's wider than it is fat. But if you have a round brush, that's actually even easier. Um, round meaning the ferrule is round all the way around. It's not flattened. So I'm going to start with just a few, a little bit of black paint on my, on my medium brush. I'm going to start all the way down at the bottom. And then I'm going to paint with the sides of it. If you have a round brush, you don't have to turn it on the side. But with a flat, I do. I want a squiggly line at first. Just a, it's like waves. This tree is very odd. It's almost like tentacles waving in an ocean. It's a very, they're very smooth curves and smooth waves. And I'm gonna do a bunch of those parallel to each other. But the longest one, the tallest one is in the middle and the ones next to it are shorter. And then on the sides, they are shorter still. So it will take on a bush shape. And I'm just getting a few dark ones on there and then we're gonna build it with other colors. Um, but on this side, because that curve uh, let me just show you. These are all like S curves, see that? But then this one goes up to give it a little more of a bush shape. We want to keep a bush shape in general. But we also want the top to be the tallest and then as it goes down on each side, they get shorter in general. So after I have 
I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven of those on. And that's all I'm going to do on the black. I'm going to clean my brush. Well, it's okay. I don't even need to clean my brush. If you still have green, you can go right into your green and just use just use a dirty brush. That's okay. What I don't want is lots of black. So if your brush is really dirty, then go ahead and clean it. But I'm going to need, I just use my dirty brush and put it in some yellow. And actually, I've got a nice green going on here. Basically, what we want is lots of shades of dark green. And we're just going to go over, starting at the bottom, and we're going to mimic those shapes overlapping those ones that we already have. Just keep the curves smooth. They almost look like, they remind me of flames almost. And so I just, I just put my dirty brush in yellow and it gave me this other green. Just all I did was use a dirty brush in yellow. And then I'm not gonna clean my brush again. I'm just gonna go right into my blue with my dirty brush, I'm going to let this color just kind of mix in. So as long as you're going back and forth between blue and yellow, we should be good. Now, if I really want some yellow to show up, I'm going to have to add a little bit of white into my yellow, remember? Um, because yellow will not show up against dark colors. But I'm really just piling on going into my blue and look at all the shades it's making just by having a dirty brush. So just keep those curves fluid. It's the weirdest painting, the weirdest style. They're, they're almost like octopus tentacles. They're just very fluid like a flame. And then I can go into my yellow and I can try it over this and see what it gives me, but keep those curves fluid. Wow, that gave me a pop of color and that's good because in, the, in this inspired original, there's lots of different shades of blue and green. And even there's a little bit of orange in it. It kind of reminds me of anemone, the, the looser kind, or seaweed, or mermaid hair. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put a little red on my dirty brush. I don't want it to be red, but with all these colors on here, I think it's going to mix to be an orange by the time it all mixes. And it is. I'm just getting a little bit of orange. Just make sure you don't have any big blobs of red. And I'm going to be careful how many times I go through that because I don't want it to just become brown. I wanted to keep distinct colors. I might add a couple that go up bigger um, because I'm noticing that I lost some of my distinction. So if I take my baby brush now, my small brush, and I go up on top and then go over some of the ones that were distinct before and I covered them up with a little bit of black, they'll, they'll show up again but I need to be careful and not do too many of these because if I do too many, I'm just gonna have brown. And I don't want that. I want these colors in there. Mostly shades of green.
And then I'm, I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of yellow on some of those at the top so it, it's not quite so dark. I think it's kind of safe to say Van Gogh was a weird dude. Fascinating, hugely talented, and kind of weird. I don't know if you know this, but uh, Van Gogh, he, he used to eat his paint. And the more he ate the paint, because it had arsenic in it, and um, lead, and all kinds of nasty, heavy metals, because that's how they used to make it. Um, every time he ate his paint, it made him a little more crazy. And the crazier he got, the more he ate his paint. If yours looks a little bit too dark, you can mix a little white with your yellow. Um, you know, and, and try to lighten it up a bit. But. Some straight on blue looks nice in there too. And this weird seaweed looking plant tree. It's almost like he saw the colors split as if through a rainbow. So if we're successful with our tree, it's supposed to look like it's alive in, in a more alive kind of way than a tree normally does. It's supposed to look like it's kind of dancing and moving around. So if yours does, congratulations. That's, that's, that's the ticket, that's what we're going for. And if it doesn't, then it'll look more like a regular tree, probably. And that's okay too. All right, when you're finished with your painting, uh, this is how you know when you're finished. If you are 80% happy with your painting, then stop. And I am running the risk of going too long myself, so I need to tell myself to stop. Uh, I think right there. I think I'm good. I'm gonna make myself stop. And the reason for that is lots of paintings get ruined in that last 20%. When you think, oh, I just need to touch this up and, oh, maybe I'll throw a pterodactyl in there uh, or some crazy idea at the last second. So if you're 80% happy, stop, walk away. I'm gonna take my littlest, smallest brush and I put it in whatever paint color you want. And then I'm just gonna put my initials in the bottom 
right hand corner, you can put your initials wherever you want. It's your painting, your world. Sign your name wherever you want, whatever color you want. Uh, so I did that. And then I am going to call it done. If I were to paint this painting tomorrow, this would look totally different uh, because every day that we paint, we bring to it how much sleep we've had and uh, how we're feeling that day and what we're thinking about, maybe what we dreamt about the night before. Uh, it's all in your painting. And every time you paint, it's gonna be a different experience and a different, uh, it's gonna look different. And so I am gonna call it done and uh, be excited about what tomorrow brings. I hope that you enjoyed painting with me tonight. This is probably, we have 500 different paintings in our gallery and I can honestly tell you, this is about the hardest one we have. So if you stuck with it to the end, woo, standing ovation, yay. This is a hard painting. There's a lot going on in this painting. Um, so congratulations, that's awesome. And um, we, do, we're going to be doing YouTube classes, uh, Zoom classes, about once a week in October. We're just getting that calendar up. Um, right now we have them three times a week in September. We're going to be cutting down a little bit because people are starting to come back out, out into public places. Um, so we're going to cut down, but we still have a lot of them on YouTube as well. We have about 55 painting classes on our YouTube channel, and you're welcome to um, do those at any time, and we do sell the kits. As you know, um, for $20, you have the paints, the uh, basic colors of paints, we teach you how to mix them. And Shell is saying, she's texting me and she's saying, thanks to everyone, and she had a good time. Yay, nice, thank you so much. I appreciate you saying that. And uh, I am going to stay on a little bit. If you have any questions, oops, sorry. Oh, I just lost you. There we go. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to let me know um, or write them down in the chat. And if you are watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And thank you so much. And thanks for the feedback. I appreciate it. I look forward to painting with you again another day. Thanks. Bye. Bye, painters.